go, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to also need to initiate the recording. Is that right? Nope. I am already. I just need to get it started right now. We are on you almost on YouTube. Okay. And then once you're done, you just all leave, shut off, and it'll stop. Great. Let me get up. So when I go to the attendees, let me just, there we go. I can oh. see it. I, can, I see the pull down so I can promote them to a panelist if I need to. Okay. Yep. Great. All right. I think I'm in good shape here. Well, Freddie, it looks like she lost. Different. So, um, but it looks like this is what I'm used to. So that's good. All right. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Okay, I didn't have any volume, so I had to leave and come back, whatever. We can hear you now really well, Freddie. Great. All right. So, Karen, you're all set? I think so. I'm promoted to a co-host. All right. And just be, give me a second before you do anything. Sarah, can you just double check and make sure you can share your screen? Me? Yeah. Why does she need to share? She may not, but I just want to see if, if when I promote people to panelists, if they can oh, okay. yeah, the disable participant screen sharing. Okay, so how do I re enable participant screen sharing? Um, down at the bottom of your screen, do you see the green button where you can share your screen? Oh, I see all panelists. Great. I'm changing that now. Yep, you can do that. Okay, great. Now, Sarah, when you go in, can you share? Yes. All right, super. That's good. Okay. Good thing you asked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um I am going to look at our agenda. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get you guys recording. You're all set. So Karen, you're okay. I am okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. I, I need a minute. I have to get the thing I have to read. Although you don't have to read it, but people are reading it. So, um. all right. So I'm going to let you guys go. Do you want me to hang around if you need something or no? You're all set? Make sure. Why don't you um, let me call the meeting to order and then we'll see. So we're, we're live now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you wait till we make sure we can, when it's time to promote people that it works. Okay. You got it. Right All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Freddie Gillespie, chair of the Open Space Preservation Commission. I am going to read this little blurb. Uh, virtual Zoom meeting may be watched or you may participate in the meeting remotely with the meeting link at www.southborotown.com remote meetings. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted. Agenda. Oh, now I'm gonna start with the agenda. So, okay, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Having a quorum, it is now 1104. And the first order of business is to review plans for Ken's Foods. And I see Scott Dowdy is here. So Karen, can you um, elevate him? I sure can. And just to uh, clarify, Sarah, are Thank you me. taking um, minutes? Oh, I hadn't asked. Trying to do that. So can you take notes? Because Karen's doing this. She can't be the I scribe. I don't. I can try to do both, but oh, I can do it. I just have to open up. Okay, perfect. Something real quick. Welcome, Scott. Hi. Hi, Scott. Um, hi, Freddie. Hi. Um, can you also can you see that um, is William Pizzoni and Jim Bourne also in the waiting room? They are now. Yeah. Could you also promote them? Just Will. Just just Bill. Just Bill. Okay. Yeah, just um, Bill is in the waiting room, and then also Aphrodite is in the waiting room. Well, so she's bring, uh, don't bring she Bill is, in. Right? Yeah. yeah, please bring Bill in. Thank you. Sure, she's an attendee, not in a waiting room. All right, how's so everybody this doing? Way. I do have a plan, Karen, that eventually I'd like to 
to share? Sure. I, I just, I think, so Scott, just so you know, um, I'm used to Zoom, but this is the first time I've been the Zoom person for a town meeting. So sometimes it's a little different, but I do believe that I have uh, enabled your sharing. So you should be able to. Okay, to well, let's, we'll all forgive each other for whatever. That's right. It's, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not great. I mean, I'm an old dog too. So. <laughs> so um, all right. All right. So, and Bill is here. Hi, Bill. Hi. How are you this morning? Good. So let's start to do. Um, I don't see. Oh, here. Now I just see it. Okay. So all right. do you want to wait? No, no. We got Bill here. I don't think I met, perhaps Jim Bourne isn't joining us. I think I gave him the. I so Scott, when him. you click on that, that green up arrow, you should see all the windows you have open in your computer and you can click on the one that you want to share. That I've done before. Thank you. I've done sure. before. Um, I think uh, maybe we should just, we should talk a bit first and then I'll put this uh, uh, sort of, sort of uh, Sounds good. review the history of this a bit with, for everybody from our perspective, if I may. All right. So I'm going to give a little um, intro to everyone who's watching and, Go ahead. and Go the, ahead. Um, and then call on you, Scott. Very good. Um, wait a second. So this is in response to a prior wildflower planting that was required by the planning board in a uh, site plan modification several years ago because you're putting a new addition on top of where that planting was and this is for a replacement area and also for review of the new plans um, and re recommendations for um, suggestions we will be making to the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board and to be clear this committee I'm sorry this commission the Open Space Preservation Commission makes recommendations only. We have no permitting authority, although our recommendations are seriously or quite well considered by the planning board. And um, so, but this is also a Conservation Commission project too. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Scott. You can give us a little rundown. And if you wanna share the plans, that will be okay. And then I'm gonna go back after you speak to the panelists, I mean, to the Open Space Commission, and then I'll ask for your response to any of our comments after that, okay? Sure, thank you. I think I'll add a little bit to the history. Um, uh, this, the Ken's Foods uh, Warehouse Project, uh, when Ken's, Ken's uh, Foods uh, took possession of the property, renovated and, uh, um, and uh, improved the property uh, this is in 2017, 2018, um, included a lot of, uh, of improvements such as uh, improving drainage. Uh, besides the building's improvements, I'll just focus on the site, improving drainage and circulation and reducing pavement. Uh, matter of fact, some of that, so this wildflower planting was a result of a change in the project that happened a few years after it was approved. Um, the owner wished to remove some pavement that wasn't uh, necessary for operations and uh, not just to sort of beautify the site, but also to improve the environmental aspects of it. Less vehicular pavement was necessary. Um, and so we went back for, that work started, we went back for approval with the planning board at the same time, um, uh, at least had been initiated. I don't. I think it had been in place for at least uh, a year or so. But there, there was an. A, a, a thanks to the hard work for Freddie and others, uh, there was a a, a major uh, initiative to uh, promote the uh, plantings of native and uh, more natural plantings throughout the town. And I don't know if this commission was formed at that point, but when we went in front of the planning board asking for permission to remove pavement and remove some of the building, um, the request came that we work with Freddie to uh, introduce the wildflower planting in the project. So um, that's how it came about. Um, I think I've got it correctly. Um, Can I jump in for one second for sure, a correction? Um, I might've taken the lead representation, but it was work with the Open Space Preservation Commission. 
just to be clear. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the commission was in place, but uh, it was our, our first because we, we know we didn't have any, we had not encountered you in 2017 and 2018. So I knew it was a fairly recent initiative at that point. In, it was. In, in I just want to be clear. I, I don't make these things up on my own. It's always. No, no. Oh, not at all. No, that wasn't. No, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I know you I weren't saying that, but just, right. just need to make it clear. There is a, you know, an authorized absolutely mission working on these so this projects guy, um, yeah. so i'm going to share the screen right, scott uh, uh, yes. why, don't, why don't you put the plan up so they can yeah. have a yeah an idea right. that, that's what i was doing and uh, let me just ask michael quinn is he with your team don't know who that is okay i think he's for our next project so okay, okay. I, I i'm going to suppose you can see my the uh plan you can see right it now. well scott yeah that's great okay good good uh, just to, for orientation, uh, Route 9 is, uh, is on the bottom of the sheet. Uh, the, uh, you can see this sort of a bunch of rectangles here, the large white space with the writing. That's the existing warehouse building. Um, uh, in pink to the right side here, uh, if you can see my cursor is where the addition is proposed. And uh, in that 2019 planning board modification decision, uh, we committed to uh, the, the uh, placement and const uh, construction of, uh, it was like 33,500 square feet, I believe, in uh, wildflower plantings in this area here. You can see that oval that's going to be displaced by the, uh, by the expansion. So that's that historic background. We are proposing to replace that in this area to the east of the expansion, which is it's another area of just about 35,000 square feet um, uh, to the east of the emergency drive that we've got to relocate around the entrance and the, uh, uh, the, the tree line and uh, wetlands associated with the uh, brook that runs through the uh, property, which is that blue line there. So um, we're presenting that as our uh, our alternative for the uh, relocation of that um, of that wildfly area. I think our mix would need to be a little bit different there. I think it would be more of a wet mix uh, where it's a slightly lower elevation, and um, uh, that's our that's our proposal uh, at this point. Thank you, Scott. Um, I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sure, please. Did you, did you, Bill, have anything he wanted to add? Uh, not at this point, no. Okay. Ahead, so I think your cursor will show on the screen, and, or if not, you can describe. Where is, where is the, um, the stream? Is that a yeah. river? Yeah. yeah, this is a perennial stream. Okay, so where's the 200 foot no touch? It's the, uh, the yellow uh, line, the 200 foot riverfront uh, zone is, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm roughly following it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, uh, Freddie, so maybe it can be seen a little bit better. And I'm gonna slide the, the um, this Oh, and I also I didn't ask Scott, can you introduce what title you have in the team? Did I? Or I might have missed it. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't really introduce myself. I'm sorry. We would seem to be. I guess we're somewhat familiar. Uh, my name is uh, Scott Doty. I'm principal at John G. Crow Associates. We're landscape architects, civil engineers for the project. And Bill Pizzoni, attorney for uh, Ken's Foods, is also here with me. Yeah, we're not a hearing type commission, so yeah. our process is a little more. Yeah. Uh, not right. formal, so, so I missed that. I, so to repeat that, that this is the, if you follow the cursor or the hand, I don't know what you've seen, the year end, um, that the cursor. there is the 200 foot riverfront area. And uh, the corner of the, uh, the expansion is coming into uh, it a bit here. And we're asking for that permission with the, with the commission 
the the wetland there's a wetland line there that's that green line not the thick green line but the lighter one that i'm following now with the points on it that that other green that's a soil uh soil break between different soil types out there that thicker green line and what so the blue is the is the um brook and uh, you can see it's quite straight in some places. And we believe that uh, the dairy farmer that worked this area for many decades prior to the warehouse, the, the building being built, relocated it, lo located it there. And um, again, that's sort of the background. So if there's, you have more questions? Please. I do. So on the plan, the area of disturbances for the building is the plan disturbance is on the outside of the planned proposal we, for the yeah, this planting. dash line here in black was the original um area of disturbance that we were proposing you know you can see that black dash line i'm yeah. following this is a change you know we we were we were at uh initially had had uh proposed a seventeen thousand square foot area in here for wildflowers and then thought we could work with the commission here to perhaps um uh uh, maybe there were some other solutions for the for a remainder that needed to be to compensate for the 30, you know, the rest of the difference. But then we figured that um, we received a, a rather uh, positive response from the commission, Conservation Commission to extend in towards the wetland in this area with the natural plantings. And we figured that that would be helpful to uh, to to the cause for uh, native plantings and also um uh environmentally sound uh principles with the conservation commission so okay and one other area where is the because i was out there and thank you for permission to walk it i went none of my commissioners were available when i went out there but uh planning board member mimi latrell um walked with me oh that's great so we did see a detention I think it's a detention basin. Is that in the upper right-hand corner above where that's we're a, looking now? That's a bio retention. That's a bio retention area. That's right okay. here. Okay, so it's outside of north, this. Yes, it's up. It's up in here. That was part of the original 2017-2018 project where we wanted we um, uh, we wanted to be able to capture the stormwater from this parking the employee parking lot that's up here in the northeast corner. And have it treated before it would be released into the environment. So, why I brought that up is when we were there, I believe um, Mimi noted on the old plans there were some trees that were or shrubbery that was should be there that haven't um, fared well. So I say so. This is a little off topic, but it's related. So yes. those trees had not; um, they they were dead or dying. A few of them, and I think there's a request to you know. They need to be replaced. Yes, that's uh, correct. That's so, correct. Yeah, we have some we have some uh, some remedial work that we need to do in some of these area in some of in that area and one other area. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a few um, comments on what our commission can do. Right, I think we need to go. When I was out there, I didn't look at the replacement area because it was undersized, so it didn't, you know, I didn't do more than glance because I knew that it wasn't at the 3,500 square feet and I didn't know where you would be able to make that up. So I'd like our commission to have the opportunity to go take a look to see how that relates to the meadow, that area that it was before. But I also note that some of the building area is in the 200 foot wetland that's right area and i believe i've had conversations with one conservation commissioner who's expressed that the concom may be looking for mitigation for storm water and other issues and then i'm suggesting that working with us on some wildflower and not just wildflower some native plant plantings elsewhere on the property could help with that mitigation requirement I, I guess and i didn't study the stormwater we haven't looked at those plans but i believe there's a question about high water table and flat surface causing some concerns and believe me i i don't have anything more than that but
but that it would make at least some of the conservation commissioners so far favorable to doing some other planting. And if you go down to where the, so this is what I wanna ask about, the big grassy area in front of the building, which I believe was a pre-existing use before the Wetlands Protection or the Rivers Act came into play so that it's an allowed use. Um, I believe it's a mowed lawn. It looks like, a, it, you know, it's taller grass, but it looks like it's mowed regularly. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, um, an allowed use, but here we're talking about mitigation, or I don't know if that's the correct term, but doing something to make the stormwater more um, permittable. Um, and also to make up for that building in some of the riverfront area. I know we used to have soccer games there. The old property owner, I believe, allowed soccer there. I don't know how, with how wet it was. But if that's not a planned use to go back to, my question is, and this is a little bit maybe a, even above and beyond the permitting requirements, it's an opportunity for Ken's to take a lead role and could get some really good um, how do I call it, promotional uh, value in, you know, taking a lead on the crisis we're currently having with the collapse of our pollinators and bird species by doing a more native planting in that whole area. Um, this is not, I know the 3,500 square feet is a replacement, and that's all we're talking about as far as the permitting aspect from the planning board, but we will look at the Conservation Commission and that section of building in the 200 feet, you know, is there an opportunity here to not only do better by us, but to also provide some value to Ken's in, you know, promoting their, you know, there'd be signage maybe and promoting this um, really big help to the ecosystem and biodiversity um, in the town of Southboro. You may know that in addition to the Open Space Commission, we have, were so, our efforts in town have been so well received that there's now a regional group. Um, the Metro West Conservation Alliance, it's made up of 36 communities and there's a Native Pollination Systems Task Force where I chair that task force and we're working to get these plantings and gardens, specific plants using, um, the plant list from Dr. Robert G. Gears research, who he's been in Southboro since 2015. Um, his research for at-risk species, we're saving species heading towards extinction. And we're trying to do these plantings, habitat improvements and public display gardens throughout the 36 communities. We have several here in Southboro, one just uh, public, more of a garden like display went up at the library. We have uh, research gardens at Breakneck Hill. There's other gardens going in at the South Open Land Foundation. We have plantings going in at the golf course and the Halloran property once invasives are removed. So this is not a unheard of thing. And we have these gardens going in across the 36 communities of Metro West. Uh, Lincoln, Concord, I'm working with Wayland, Chelmsford, Clinton, um, Northborough, Concord. I mean, the list goes on and on. And this could be some area where Ken's could play a lead role and it would be beneficial not only to um, maybe your image, not that you need an image improvement, but certainly doesn't hurt to be a leader in this effort, but also it could maybe help with some of the uh, issues the Conservation Commission may be asking for. And I have that plant list. So I'm also going to be asking that we use a different seed mix you already said that it would need wetlands fortunately a lot of the plants on dr g gear's list are wetland species and we're working with earned seeds instead of new england wetland plants yeah. to come up with custom lists that are eco type as close to our eco type as we can get uh, seed availability is difficult um, we're trying to improve that so i know i'm throwing out a lot at you these are recommendations sort of above and beyond what you came in here proposing. And another thing um, that is really important are willows, early season flowering plants and the willows are the ones that do this. And they are very good at uh, maybe helping with water filtration, water 
you know, water issues. And it's not just pussy willows. Um, there's several willows. So I'll be happy to follow up um, after our commission talks if they decide they'd like, you know, we have been focused on Dr. G. Gear's work. And so there's no question with that. I guess I'll end on that, let you talk a little bit, and then I'll get to my other commissioners. Sure. Yeah, well, Scott, if I, if I could jump in here. Please, yeah, go ahead, Bill, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Ken's is always looking to <laughs> beautify and help their, the environment as well. I mean, it's evident with all the pavement they've removed and replaced with grass and other plantings. And there is a, a planting scheme for more, a few more trees and, and stuff like that at the site. Uh, I just want to point out that, that the addition and all this work we're talking about is already in, it's, I'd say it's 90% in previously disturbed area and that's all lawn right now. And the little corner that gets into the, uh, the uh, Rivers Act 200 foot, uh, you are allowed to work within 100 feet of the river. Uh, with, you know, with the approval of the board and where it's especially in a previously disturbed area, they usually pretty carte blanche about that. Uh, I will say that, you know, Ken's will look at all the different species that you're talking about. And, uh, you know, I mean, I can't commit to anything right now, uh, but I'm sure that they'd utilize it and they'd want to, you know, help, help with that. Uh, as you can see, you know, all the wildflowers and everything are near your undisturbed wooded corridor over on the right side as well that will help promote that rather than, you know, I'm, a, I'm afraid what happens down by Route 9 isn't going to get the benefit that it should be. And maybe we'll look at some other spots around the site that maybe we could do something uh, and get back to you on that. They're not adverse to doing things like that. Uh, so, you know, they, they may be open. Uh, it's just that we need to be sure that, uh, you know, we don't impact visibility as well on, on Route 9. I know you're only talking about flowers uh, and, and plant, you know, low-growing plantings along the, uh, the front there by the, the river or the brook. Um, and maybe there's a way that we can always seed in that area that's, you know, already disturbed with some growth in there to add some, you know, hybrid uh, types of plantings that will do what you're looking to do, Freddie. Uh, you know, Ken's is, you know, they're always, they're good, good neighbor, not only in South Grove, but in every community they're in. And they try to work with the community. And heck, if we can get some written publicity or digital publicity out there about things we're doing, we're always looking to do that. Uh, Scott, I just want to make sure I didn't misquote on all the work we're doing out there. I don't know if all the planting we were looking at is in previously disturbed area, but I, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, it's there's not really anything that you see out there outside of that's within the four, you know, the tree limits that hasn't been disturbed. Um, right. uh, I don't know how long the history of some of the folks listening in, but uh, they probably remember this back as a dairy farm, uh, perhaps uh, before the 1970s. But um, it was uh, it was quite a uh, it, it, it's all previously disturbed, uh, not to say that we can enhance and improve things as we're moving along as we have already. Um, I just, I wanted to, uh, and I also just wanted to address one aspect of what you were saying, Freddie, about exhibit gardens and promotional in, return, in terms of native uh, plantings and such, whether or not it's, you know, to the east or to the north of this building where we've got some, by the way, we've got some, um, areas that are not um, uh, paved to immediately to the northwest of the building and also to the north side of the building where we removed pavement and portion of the building in, uh, to, in 2019. Um, there's some other opportunities there. But one of the concerns really is safety. Um, as I'm sure you when you were out there, maybe it wasn't that busy when you were out there, but the truck activity out there is um, can cause some concerns for having, if, if we were to put together an exhibit garden or anything like that for people to come visit, I'd be concerned. I'd have that. Ken's probably has that concern. I'm sure of it. Um, um, can I just say, yeah, I, I, I'll jump in there. I, I don't think they'd want people on a regular basis walking in there. The truck I wasn't proposing is. that here. So yeah, I, I, I didn't, okay. I didn't I think I'd sure. that for you. So I was talking about how big this effort is. It is. Yeah 
public display gardens, yes, but also habitat. So the public display of this could be you do the front meadow where people driving down Route 9 and stuck in traffic look over, see the pretty flowers and the, how beautiful these meadows can be, and then see a sign saying, you know, pollination preservation, native pollination preservation garden. We're also going to have certification little logos that would identify you being part of the um, MCA effort. And not that people would be getting out of their cars and coming to see it, but also okay. what you're talking about other. So anytime you improve the habitat, you're making yeah. an improvement. People don't have to be seeing it, but we want people to be planting these plants at home and they need to see them in a different landscape than in um, conservation land. You know, when people first started on the, the native plant mm -hmm. kick, people yeah, maybe and, went and, wild and what's called messy meadows. So we are trying to show they can be formal gardens, but they also make beautiful wildflower meadows as well. So um, I think some of the things you're talking about, you know, adding in other areas are great. I'd like to see beyond this permitting issue that we somehow the Open Space Preservation Commission and Ken's Foods become partners in promoting our efforts for uh, pollination preservation, pollination systems preservation. It's not just about the pollinator, it's the pollinator animal interaction. And I will say, Ken, uh, where is it? Um, St. Mark's School. They're going big on this. You know, they did a dorm addition and they had a requirement there, but they're going to be looking at adding these plantings in elsewhere on their property. We're trying to not just have it be libraries and schools and conservation land, but businesses as well, and particularly businesses that aren't required to, just in permitting, which is one area to start the conversation. I will say that. Uh, there's somebody at Sanofi. Is that how you say it? I always call it Genzyme. They're looking Santa at Fi. putting some... Sanofi, yeah. Sanofi, sorry. Sanofi. Um, it's French. <laughs> I, I murder English too, so... Um, yeah. Sanofi, they will... Um, they got a list, of, you know, they got an area to put some plant, a blue garden in, and they were told, oh, it's near a wetland. You have to use these plants that the Conservation Commission requires. And when my volunteer got the list, it was Dr. G. Gear's plant list. So Framingham's wow. Conservation Commission is already requiring plants from his list or suggesting or recommending if there's pushback. So there's no reason not to use his list. Um, getting the seeds is not through New England wetland plants though, unfortunately. Because, right, Freddie, um, in that regard, can I ask a question? Are, uh -huh. there, are there locations? I mean, having lived in South Pro, I used to, I moved now uh, for 30 odd years, and growing up in the area and, and knowing this area as well. And I do remember <laughs> the farm that was there, and I remember coaching the soccer that was there. But are there locations in town that town owned property that you guys are looking at to create flower meadows and types of things like that? These types of meadows that you're talking about? Yeah, we're it doing might it. Be, it might be wise for you guys to create a uh, a fund, basically, for people to, to fund into, uh, and then you know you guys can have town properties which are spotted, you know, all over the community that you could you could add wild wildflower areas to, which would be great. I mean, uh, believe me. I like <laughs> I that idea, um, but to your point. Breakneck Hill, 100 acres, we're actively managing it for this. Yeah. Um, it was the first research site in 2015 of Dr. Robert G. Gear. Um, we trained volunteers. Uh, a lot of his plant lists came out of the research done there. And now yeah. we're adding the plants in. The golf course has a project. We're removing invasives. And after the invasives are removed, yeah. that was funded with CPA at the golf course and also at the newest Halloran property. Um, yeah that's you know we have to wait till the invasive removal happens okay. we're also working like i said a more of a formal display garden at the library and then yeah. additionally the south broken land foundation we're in uh soil preparation mode at the beals preserve and we're looking at maybe expanding that later to meadows there so yeah we're looking everywhere but the reality okay. is um this is this is very helpful 
uh, you know, because I know, like I said, Ken's is a good neighbor. They're, they invest in a lot of different things, uh, charities and, and other stuff as well. Uh, so, you know, we can, we can look at that, but I, I think we're getting off track. So okay. <laughs> we will look on the site and, and look, at, look at the site to see if there are, you know, other things that we could incorporate and do on site or if there's another way that we could, we could help them. You know, you grew well, I also was uh, looking think, at, sorry, go ahead, Bill, I, I didn't mean to. No, I, I, think, I think the impact that we're having here and the replacement of the, the meadow to the right and, you know, maybe a few other ideas uh, would be sufficient for this, you know, for the impact this project having, uh, you know, and that's the discussion we would have with the Conservation Commission. But in the interim and in the meantime, we will look at other alternatives that maybe we can, like I said, spot some stuff on site. Scott pointed out a few different things, uh, and, and other ways that we can, you know, uh, help move your initiatives forward. You know, because they, they are good initiatives. They're very nice initiatives. So we can follow uh, up on. Then I'll be, I'll be quiet after that, after that comment. <laughs> well, you can speak again, Bill. After I speak, and my other commissioners certainly always happy to hear from you. And I want to be clear: yeah. I was not saying anything about. Ken not having Ken's not having a good reputation. You know they absolutely do. Oh, we understand. But everyone is always looking to, you know, more, you know, more opportunity to showcase what good neighbors and environmental stewards yeah. you are. And we know that this native plan initiative is new, but we go even further with the helping to save species that are heading towards extinction, and. Yeah. The thing about our initiative, so the Open Space Preservation Commission has a native plant, native pollinator initiative. Um, research has come out. Doug Tallamy is a professor down in Delaware, and he's written several books. He, you know, you can't get a seat at any of his talks. He overfilled Harvard University's auditorium. The last um, presentation before COVID shut everything down. Uh, 700 people were there, I think. Anyhow, he has the book, Bringing Nature Home and Nature's Best Hope. And basically, he has come up with the estimate that we have gone completely non-native in all of our yards, businesses, landscape. It, there's not enough land to conserve to turn things around from this collapse of our environmental um, ecosystem. We've lost 30% of our common backyard birds in the last 50 years. Common backyard birds, 30% are gone. And this is in part due to how we landscape our yards. So I bring that up because we have to change all of our landscape, not just conservation land. And even our conservation land we're finding doesn't fulfill, you know, it's old ag land. It's full of not native plants. So that's why we're asking for, yes, this pres this. Um, Replacement may meet the requirements. We'll go take a look, but we're asking for even partnering and doing more. And that's why, because what he has come up with is we have to change all of our landscapes to 70% native if we hope to save our ecosystem. And we may be at the top, but if everything below us collapses, uh, we, don't, we don't survive either. So that's Great. my little Thank spiel you. on why. And um, I think what I will recommend, well, let me ask my other commissioners to speak and I'll make a couple of recommendations to end this, okay? And then let you feedback. Karen, do you want to weigh in, please? Sure, yeah. No, I, um, I fully support the, uh, the collaboration between Ken's and our um, native plant uh, pollinators initiative. I think it's good for both of us. And it sounds like you're um, fairly amenable to it and, and agreeable. So, so I look forward to a good collaboration around it. Thank you. And Sarah, do you have anything you'd like to add in? I'll just second what Karen said. I definitely, I think we could do some good things and help each other out. Um, I think with all this, the space and opportunity there on the property, there's definitely some some good things that could happen in the future. Okay, so I have, I think maybe three recommendations. One, the commission will go out and take a look at the area that you're suggesting for the replacement. 
two, we will send you Dr. G. Gear's plant list. And I'm actually um, going to be contacting Earned Seeds on other projects and can give you some feedback there. Our goal is never to make you spend more money. Like if, you know, New England wetlands plants, what you had previously, I believe, agreed to plant in the old area at a certain price per acre, you know, we try to keep it there, but, you know, we'll also be looking at, you know, the more wildflowers, we, grasses are a part of this mix, right? We need these grasses and um, which keeps the cost down. So we're not trying to make you have a exorbitantly priced um, seed mix, but we will look to get the best one and, you know, work with you on that if that's amendable to you. Secondly, um, when I went out and looked at the wildflower meadow, it didn't look like it had been a success. And I am aware this is difficult. It's a new way of landscaping. Um, Larry Weiner is one of the best. He actually started out here at Western Nurseries. He's one of the best in the country. Putting It's meadow establishment. He has a book called, uh, I'll send you a link to it. I think it's called uh, Garden Revolution. He actually has uh, lays out how you have to establish these wildflower meadows mm -hmm. and it's standard practice now. He does more big estate um, meadows, but it's also used on conservation land. We're using this in our um, efforts as well. So I think we would recommend that there be a requirement for how this is established. Like what I saw when I went there was not a wildflower planting. It was all clover with a few. And it seemed like the non-natives, if they were, when I say non-native, native south of here, ones we wouldn't have included in any mix we recommended, but they were already in the New England wetland plant mix, maybe. I don't know how they got there, yeah. Yeah. but they weren't, they weren't, they weren't anything. Um, and they weren't that valuable. So right. and there was we, two plantings that were done too, uh, Freddie. It was done two, two years in a row. Uh, it was, yeah, the clover was disappointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we would suggest is, you know, um, uh, within, we're going to have to think about this, but the recommendation to the planning board to have a, you know, some sort of establishment requirement and working with you, but they have to be like, we know that it's like a, the next year you have to go in and mow at a certain time before they get a certain height to keep the weed pressure down. There's always weed pressure, right? And so that's one thing I think we'll look at making that recommendation. And I'm going to suggest to my commission, I should say. And then also the, I'm going to make a recommendation to my commission to re suggest that the conservation commission look at if they're requiring any further uh, mitigation or, or added requirements for the stormwater that they look at planting that front meadow, I hear you're not, um, you're not loving the idea, but I think in our looking at it, you know, a, a sea of grass is much better if it was a sea of mixed native grasses and plants flowers and plants. So I think I would recommend that we suggest that to the Conservation Commission, because you did ask for this to be a joint review for conservation and the planning board. As far as the planning board goes, I think the only requirement is if that 33,000 or 3,500 square feet meet the requirements. And that's, you know, a recommendation with the, um, with the seed mix. The other thing I would note is that you have, a, I believe the limit of disturbed area goes in front of the building to the side of that orange hatching. That um, could be an area It's already being disturbed. Is that correct? Yeah. What that is, is just because that, that, that's where we're tying into the underground detention and infiltration system there. That's what that hatch area is. And it's just that we need to go beyond it a little bit to, to tie in the, the structures underground. So um, that dotted line isn't the disturbed area line? No, it is. It is. It's, it's the approximate. It's probably um, it's probably larger than we will need to go to the west there. Um, I'm just suggesting there could be opportunity there. Yeah, and then. I, yeah, I, I'll go ahead. I, I know you've given us an opportunity when you're done. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And then the final thing is I I'm wondering about this statement that in red, I can't read it on the plan here, but it says something like 
you know, in the muck area, that it's area of undisturbed open space. Is that deed protected? Because otherwise, I don't know that it should say open space on it on a planning or zoning map. Um, I, mean, I, I think it, it should. It's one of the area, one of the areas that are asked for in the um, LID application, I believe, what areas on the site are undisturbed open space. I don't think, I think it's, op I think it's undisturbed open space, small O, small P S. I don't think it, it's not a, I know your definition of open space might be different from that earlier, that, that, that question or that answer that we're trying to give there. Okay. So, um, well, let's make sure it's, the, you know, correct it, term for what they're asking, because it could be oh, misleading to it, other I, people's I, I, well, I, I think if it wasn't, I think we probably they. I think that Corinna might have clarified that with us. But the um, it's uh, it's just it's to show that 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 brown line is just show areas to the right of that, and there's also some to the left you can see. But it's yeah, more there's a, the, that, another one up top. Those areas where we're not that, that that from what we can tell have not been disturbed in decades. Um, so okay. Uh, that's all. That's all it is. Um, okay. That's all that's trying to show. All right. I just don't want people confused, thinking there's some, you know, protected open space there. No, which is no, there's no restriction. It's, it's, it's no restriction other than the normal, natural, the regulatory restrictions, because a lot of that area is wetland and um, and floodplain anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, if if I could, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go a, ahead, just, Phil. Just a couple of things. Yeah, uh, it, you know, your first couple on the list, send the plant list. Yeah, we're happy to look at it. We'd love to incorporate what's the proper way to do it. Uh, and, the, you know, take a look at the area of replication. I think you're going to find it, it is suitable and, it, and it's going to work properly. And it's actually located in an area that's going to probably attract more uh, birds and, and, you know, the, the you know, was different the plants was isolated. yeah the insects and everything that are going to come there you know the bees and all uh the uh the planting in the in the, <laughs> the planting in the front is is going to be uh somewhat of a challenge only because ken's has a model that they use with most of their developments where it's clean meadow in front of their buildings and stuff and the principal likes to keep it that way uh, but we will look at what we can do, you know, closer to the wetlands area and the river. Uh, and we'll look at other areas on the site. Uh, I firmly agree with you that I believe conservation will require that there be some sort of establishment program and requirement for anything that we plant there. Uh, and that will be built into their, it's usually built into their approvals, uh, which get reviewed, you know, regularly. And, and they do go out for a couple of years and make sure that the plantings have taken and, yeah. you know, they're working properly. But, you know, you know me, I like to be frank and to the point. So I wanted to tell you the, the, the challenge we may have on the front there. Uh, but we may be able to do a lot of other things to, you know, assist your commission and, and you know, the initiatives. Um, so with that, I will be quiet again. And Scott, do you have anything else? Uh, j just, uh, I, I think you said, but if you didn't, uh, please send along, please, you got my email address, Freddie, send me the Dr. Gear information. That's very intriguing, as also any um, any links you might have to Larry Weiner's uh, 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 information. That would be great. Um, I do say, I have to say that, and I apologize to anybody from New England flower, uh, New England wildflower mix, it's maybe listening here is that there is that uh, I don't know what what happened there but we did use their mix and it it could have been just a struggle I also think some of the issue of that being isolated uh, the way it was um, might have contributed to uh, its its detriment whereas this new area as Bill pointed out it's immediately adjacent to um, to uh, areas that are going to remain natural um, we did stay 20 feet away from wetlands and such, but essentially those areas will pro those areas will probably also take over um, uh, because they won't be maintained in any manner in which they've been maintained to date. So, uh, so I think we can only show you this 35,000 over there, but I think it's it's going to include that extra 20 foot strip that we're not we're not letting ourselves count because we can't go in there and disturb it, so to speak. If you know what I mean. Um. So, 
So you, there's some bonus area there. It's not just that 35,000, it's a little bit wider, uh, but we can't really count it because we can't go in there. So, okay, we may, yeah. you know, it doesn't do much service if you plant natives and that what's in that 20 foot is all say invasive, aggressive. Um, well, maybe we can work together with the commission to allow to, to do a sidewalk to, to 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 scarify and and remove what we can to to um to, to go into that area since that area that 20 foot area since what we're doing is a positive benefit in the long run i believe that's an allowable use in the 20 foot if you get it as long as you're going for a permit it could be part of your permit agreement okay. because right. it's it's if it's for habitat improvement yeah you know so yeah, I'm not like assuming right, that they will let you, but it could be an right. ask. I think we should look at what is actually there because okay. what happens if you have the wrong species there, they will just come in and overtake what you're trying to accomplish in the planting. So it's worth taking a look. Yeah, um, okay. And I, I want to be clear. I hear you not wanting to, and I think you'll call it a clean meadow that Ken's likes and you know, what we're trying to do with our initiative is change people's opinions so that what we're talking about becomes the standard clean meadow, beautiful meadow. I know that there might be a specific term for what you think of as a clean meadow. To me, it looked like a, a lawn um, that's a little bit longer. And, you know, these perceptions have to change. And we're starting that now with our initiative. And so even though you're not amendable to it, it doesn't mean we wouldn't recommend it to the Conservation Commission. But it's we have, again, no permitting authority. It would just be a recommendation. And we are also going to be focusing on the 35, is it 33 or 3,500 square feet? Well, the number was originally we committed to was 33,500 square feet, I believe, that we were able to, we felt we could present, but it just, we delineated this area. It came to just above that. So it's 35,000 square feet plus that 20 foot strip. If we start to count that, it's gonna, the number will grow. So, okay. So can we also, to, we need to move on. I think we have someone else, another. Um, sure. We don't want to hold you on off any longer. Well, too. this was a good discussion. I think there's potential for future collaboration. I hope even if we don't agree on that front area that we Kevin shut a door on working together on some of those other areas that aren't part of your permitting. Um, I'm and, sure we haven't. I'm, I'm sure we haven't. And I'll, okay. I'll have a discussion with them. Okay. So I'll send you, we'll send you some more follow up email, but I want my commission to um, needs to vote, I believe, oh, okay. that what we recommend. Because when is your next conservation commission meeting? Oh, uh, it's two weeks out. We have a, and oh gosh, um, we have a planning. Our next planning board check-in is for the uh, planning board. Yeah, I think it's in two weeks, Scott. Thursday. Two weeks. Yeah, they're both out about two weeks out. So, um, uh, I think the best. Yeah, anything, anything you could do the sooner that the sooner the better, obviously. Um, if you guys go out there, uh, please give us um, a little jingle on the, via email so we can alert them out. So that um, uh, if they if they if they have any super truck activity, they might want to make sure that you guys are not going to be in the midst of, of it. I don't know what that means. I, I just because I'm not involved yeah. in the operation yeah. out there. I just know that uh, there's concerns for safety out there. Is there a timing that's better than others, and we can find a time we can go, and then I'll let you know when you say yay or nay. It would I, probably I be, be afternoon would probably be the best time to go, uh, but the the uh, the guard at the gate will direct you to a, a safe place to park, and that way you can park and, and go out and walk around. I, I think what we should do, Bill, is arrange that when they come and visit, especially if they're going to come to look at the east, is that that the guard he parks in the, the entrance to that emergency drive. It's probably better for you to go along the emergency drive in front of the south face of the building and around over there, then go through all the truck terminals. Well, a, a lot of what I do, Scott, when yeah. I go to the site, when I when I have to walk it and I don't want to go to Route 9, I get on Parkerville and go in the back entrance. Ah. And I park 
I park at the gate and I walk from there. It's a small off a deer off a deer foot. You mean the, the uh, foot, driveway? Yeah. yeah, you see that? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, we. That's where we parked over there when I went oh, last time. Cool. But oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. No, we didn't park off Deerfoot. We drove through the trucking area, and um, yeah, I'm seeing see over where, off. See where the curse, see where the yep. curse is now. Yep. That driveway is open all the way to a gate that's near the brook, and we can and you cross can walk the brook around the side of it and and get to it. But still, probably at that point, we probably should just alert Chuck that you're going to be there. So. Right. We need, we're going to need to we're going to need to know you're on site because otherwise, if they see you walking around, I don't <laughs> I don't want them to call the police. <laughs> So we will notify you of when we have a set date to go. Yeah. Um, as far as the recommendation, I'm going to ask my commission that you agree to make a motion that, well, let me ask, do you think we can meet again in the next two weeks, Karen and Sarah? How about this? Here's the motion. I just want, I don't want to hold you up and give a recommendation to the planning board, but I, I don't have one to really give because we don't have one yet. So that well, we you, will- you, wanna, you still wanna go out and do the site walk with your commissioners, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll have an, uh, a position. Well, it'll be subject to your, your going out and, and taking your site walk. We'll understand that. That way, at least you won't have to have another meeting to have your vote. Um, so you might wanna just, suggest uh, a recommendation subject to your site walk, which will take place in the next seven to 10 days, whatever. Okay, so this is the, um, this is what I'm thinking. We'll make a recommendation that if subject to our site walk, that the area outlined for the replacement meets the requirement using plants on Dr. G. Gear's list seed mix instead of the prior one. And that an establishment protocol be put into place. And furthermore, that we will be making a recommendation to the planning, I mean, to the Conservation Commission to look at seeding in the front area with um, plants from Dr. G. Gear's list as well as part of any requirements for stormwater mitigation. Um, and I know you, um, and I just need one of my commissioners, if you agree, if there's to so move, and then we can discuss it. May I may I make a suggestion before you do that? Uh, uh, yeah. That um, could you add something about recommending or uh, if 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 allowable by the conservation commission, which they probably would, that we would extend this area into that twenty foot no work zone. When we'll we'll make that change on the plans and make this area larger because it does make sense to go that way with it. Based on our site visit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's all beautiful natives, we wouldn't recommend that, but I doubt it is, but we don't know. Long, I think it's going right up to the edge. So. The wetlands are flagged out there, by the way, the state. So okay. So I'm going to start over. The motion would be to make a recommendation that the, um, sorry, make a recommendation to the planning board based on our site walk. that the area proposed for the wildflower meadow replacement mm -hmm. is sufficient and to ask that the area be extended to the include the 20 foot no touch zone with a establishment protocol as part of the requirements for the permit. Additionally, we will recommend to the Conservation Commission to add a native plant, wildflowers, and grass mix seeding to the front of the building if they're looking for 
mitigation for stormwater. Karen, you can say so, so moved. If you're there, Karen, did you freeze? Oh, no, I'm here, sorry. Uh, yes, I, I also um, agree with that proposal. So say so moved. So moved. Is there a second? That would be you, Sarah. I mean, I'm sorry, that was Karen, so Sarah. Yes, so moved. No, you, you're seconding. I'm seconding, Sarah. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? I, th I think that kind of covers what we want to do without having a definite recommendation. It, it allows us to move forward, do the site walk, and then make any changes to that in a meeting afterwards, but gives you some um, assurance that we're moving forward on this. That's great, thank you. Okay, so now we need to take a vote. Karen? Uh, yes, I, I, I approve that. Sorry, Freddie, I'm, I'm completely confused by this process. It's not what we've usually done. It was a motion you, I may, I, I said it and you so moved it okay. so that became the motion. Okay. Sarah seconded it. Now we have to vote on it. So you have to say yes or no. So Karen, approve or not? Yeah, I approve it. Sarah, now you get to say approve or not? You're muted. Yeah, I'm just, I'm. I don't know if I'm still supposed to be taking notes, but I'm trying to go back and forth between the screens. So I, I agree. Okay. And I agree. So that unanimously passes a little bit convoluted, but we'll, we'll listen to the tape and make sure we have it right. Okay. Is there any final comments from uh, Bill or, or Scott? Thank you very much. Thank, I, oh, thank that, you for all fine. you're doing for the community also. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you right. for coming. Thanks very much. We'll be in touch about our site plan date. So this portion of our agenda is over. So Karen, can you um, remove Scott and Bill from the panel or you guys can sign off. Yeah, I don't know and I believe we still have Michael Quinn here for our next, let me just double check. He the Northboro Road. To uh, bring him into the panel. Yep. Hi, Michael. Are you still here with us? I am. And you're here for the Northboro Road? I am. Okay. So I'll just fill my commissioners up and then you can give us an update. I won't fill them up. I'll, I'll, I'll update them on our on this project uh, in several years ago, it came before us, we reviewed it. There was a requirement for native plants on this project. A plan was um, submitted and approved by the planning board and the building has gone up and the landscape doesn't have exactly the plants that were on the plan. So we're looking to have that uh, rectified, uh, replaced the, one, the ones that aren't native or on the plan to be taken out and to add the new ones. And we have a site visit plan for Monday morning, correct, Michael? Yes, that's correct, Freddie. Right, so we were having a meeting today for the Ken, so I thought we'd put this agenda item on. I'm not sure without a plan that we have much to discuss, but I, I would like to hear from you um, and then see what we, we think we can um, move forward, how we can move forward, okay? Right, uh, so first, thank you for inviting me. Um, what I have done is hired a subway design group and a no, another um, landscape um, person to identify all the plants that, are, that have been planted that are non-native, okay? So we're gonna remove all those. Um, we are in the process of identifying as many native plants as were approved on the original documents. We're trying to source them now, and hopefully we're gonna start replacing those, the ones that are non-native next week. I don't believe I can get, get all the plants that were originally on the plan done now. So some of this will have to wait till the spring. 
Uh, once I've identified the ones we can do now, I will forward a copy of those plants to the open space committee and to the planning board. I wanna be completely transparent on this. Uh, I'm trying to go back to the original plan that was approved and that's exactly what we're gonna have uh, planted at that site. So Michael, thank you for this effort. Um, I know you originally had been asking for some different types of plants and our position was if you can't plant the ones that are on the plan, then they need to be replaced with native to New England straight species as was in the original plan, even if it's a different plant. So it seems like now you're going to try to do exactly what was on the original plan, which we would have no comment against as long as that's what it is. And again, cultivars are not an acceptable um, planting choice and we don't need to go into why it's the requirement of the bylaw and if it's on the plan then it would be acceptable so um so so in, in doing this you know this is a a, a great expense and it's, it's totally our problem um i'm going to ask you know i'm going to do as much as i can now and then the, the remaining plants will be done in the spring i'm going to ask for the, I'm gonna ask the planning board for the certificate of occupancy. There's no reason a building should be vacant over the winter. I will put in writing whatever we can't plan now that we will plant in the spring. Um, we, will, we will not be planting any cultivars. Everything we plant will be native. If we can't get a native species that's specified in the plan, we'll come to the open space committee and the planning board with a recommendation of a replacement native. Okay, that that's is exactly what the permit required, I believe. It and is. we are aware of the difficulty of, you know, native plants or not even native plants, plants aren't available all season long. So yes. um, we are aware that is a situation that does arise in these projects. Uh, we know that if this had been planted on schedule with the correct plants originally, that wouldn't be an issue now, but we would not, um, I don't think our commission would ever hold up a project. If the safeguards are in place to ensure that the plants do get planted next year. So, I mean, next spring. So we would look still to meet this, do the on-site meeting on, on Monday. And then we have nothing to vote on now because we have nothing in front of us beyond, um, that if, if the safeguards are in place, I don't think we would object to waiting to the spring for you to get the right plants. And that I, would I be our recommendation. Right. I, I greatly appreciate that. So I'm trying to be completely transparent. I wanna keep the open space committee and the planning board informed. And once I've identified, which is gonna be fairly easy to do, all the non-native species, um, we're going to, um, source on the native species that were originally uh, recommended or they were originally approved and that's what we that's what we will be planting so. so first i just want to make one correction we're the open space preservation commission oh, we're not a committee okay everyone keeps getting that wrong um but it's important to have our name right you're not the only one though um so i think we do make a vote that we would, pending our site visit, the outcome of the site visit, that if you're, um, communication to the planning board is that you're going to plant exactly what was on the, the list before or come back to the open space commission and the planning town planner to approve any replacements that we would be okay with waiting for some of those to arrive in the spring if they're not available now. Sarah, Karen, you, you can say so moved and then that becomes the motion. Great, so moved. And then Sarah, you can second. I'll say, is there a second? 
Second. So that's been approved and seconded by Sarah. Are there any comments? I think that covers what you need, Michael, if the yes, site walk goes okay. Yep. All right, so then um, anyone else have any comments to make? Are there any raised hands? I see no raised hands. Okay, so now we vote to approve or not. Sarah? I vote to approve. Karen? I vote to approve. And I approve. So that's unanimous and that passes. And Michael, we'll see you at 11 o'clock on site on Monday. Yes, you will. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very you. much. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Now we go to our Great. regularly so, scheduled so, program. Yeah, so we, I, should I, now Michael's just left us. Okay, great. That's great. So um, I want to see what's on the agenda next. Um, so I'm agenda, just looking. Yeah, on the agenda next, it looks like uh, new members is being discussed. Okay, so I wanted to, um, can you promote Aphrodite? Yes, so excited to have her. So I wanted to introduce you. I, I hope you both met her at some of our um, volunteer workshops. She's been helping out at the Open Space Preservation Commission's project at the library. She's been helping out at the Becology Research Garden and um, she participated in our winter so so I want to welcome Aphrodite your first time attending one of our meetings we always feel um, I had asked Aphrodite if she was interested in joining the Commission because we have an opening to put in a um, volunteer application to the Board of Selectmen but we always think it's best for people to come to a meeting to see what types of things we work on and we haven't done a review of a plan in a long time, so we're a little, maybe a little rusty, but um, I want to welcome you. And um, um, so Af Aphrodite, I did give you permission to talk. I tried to promote you to panelists, but it looks like you maybe uh, I did, I did something wrong. Yeah. All right. yeah, so let me, let me promote you again. Well, she's here. Yes, please. Ah, uh, great. Yes. No, she's, I don't know why she was here. Well, she was, she had permission to speak, but she wasn't a panelist, but now she's a panelist. Okay, so Aphrodite, you need to unmute. Yes, I'm not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so good to have you, Aphrodite. Welcome. Uh, uh, so welcome, hello, Aphrodite. Oh, thank and you so much. You know, Karen and Sarah are here, and we're the three members, appointed members of the Open Space Preservation Commission. And, you know, I hope you will stay for the rest of the meeting. And um, and then make a decision, and as soon as possible, fill out your form if you're still interested in our work. Um, Absolutely. I, I will say that our agenda is heavy on the native plant pollinator initiative, but we do mm -hmm. other work as well. Our primary goal is to preserve land in Southboro, but we decided a while ago that as projects are few and far between, although we are always looking for opportunity, it's part of our work, that one way we can help preserve open space, it's facilitate the preservation, that what we do in our own yards impacts um, it's not open space that's protected, but it is open space in the general definition of mm -hmm. any land that's open to the air and sky so in that aspect all of our yards are part of the open space fabric of the town of Southboro so what we're doing with the native plant pollinator initiative is just right in line with helping you know so we're doing you know instead of just waiting for the next open space project we dug in and are working to improve the ecosystem and ecology of the town on the unprotected open spaces. Yeah. So um, do you have any questions of what you've heard so far? Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, like the, everything is really interesting. Yes, it is. So this was a new aspect. We have permitting that requires native plants. So we make our recommendation to the planning board. We make our recommendation to the Conservation Commission when a project comes forth. And 
um, that's what those two projects were. Next is the, um, I'll go to the next agenda item if you don't have any questions right now. But we want you to stay with us as long as possible. Yes, I'll, yes, yes. I will stay. I will try to stay until like uh, at the end. So my only question, no question. It is like my English. It is not like a hundred percent. So if I don't understand something, please be with me. Uh, I like to make questions. Okay. So I want to be like hundred percent. If I do something, I want to be hundred percent in, and I understand everything. That's all. Well, I don't think you'd find a more amendable group of people to work with. Yeah, Aphrodite, okay. we are so open to that. And thank you for being, you know, so clear about that. But um, yeah, we we will do our best to, uh, you know, always, always listen. And please let us know if there's anything you don't understand. And we'll let us know if we don't understand you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. So our next agenda item is minutes. And these have been sent out um, several times. Uh, Karen just sent them out again today and unfortunately we hadn't met since July um, because of scheduling things so I have the minutes of July 21st um, let us see. Would you like me to share my screen to show those minutes? You may. Great. And then I'm going to also open up on, in that uh, session on July 21st was also the wonderful, the wonderful presentation that you gave, Freddie. Um, so I have that as well, because that'll be a um, supplement to the minutes. That has to be sent in with the minutes. Correct. We're also going to have to send in the plan that um, Scott put on the screen that we right. looked at. Right, that would be sent in for today's minutes. But yep. um, this is back on the 21st. And um, it was the meeting where everybody... Um, Listen to the presentation that, that you gave, Freddie. And then also, um, you can see the minutes here, if there's any. I see a typo right here, let me fix that. I'm not seeing a typo, but. Um... So. Where's the typo, Karen? It was under storm water. Water was spelled wrong. I just fixed it. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for, I guess the chair can make a motion once in a while. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for July 21st, 2021 as amended. Is there a second? Um, I second that, uh, second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye, Freddie approve. Karen? Um, Karen approves. Sarah Rossitano approves. That passes unanimously. And so Aphrodite, once you're a member, if you, if, well, if you put in your application and the selectmen appoint you, you would then also be able to approve our, you know, vote on our minutes and stuff like that. So that's Beautiful. the approval process. Okay. Um, we don't take votes that often because our commission um, has a lot of projects that, you know, we do updates on and so that's set to be sent in today, Karen? Yes, I'll send it in today. I'm going to send it in along with uh, PowerPoint. Yep. Let's see, you've probably seen that PowerPoint, right? You probably don't need to see that again. If you'd like to, I can share my screen. I don't think we need to show the PowerPoint on the minutes okay. discussion because we have a lot to get over for the rest of the meeting. Fine. But I will make sure to send it to Aphrodite that she can see it at some point. Okay. That sounds great. Um, I'm just going to go to the next agenda item is the fiscal year 2023 budget. Like so can you bring that up? Well, yes. Karen, thank you. So I have to meet with the, the, 
the fiscal team of the town in, I think it's November 4th, there's a date coming up um, and we have to put in our request. So back, see when we were at 1,500? Yeah. In 2020, we asked to go up to $3,000 to be, I believe it was 3,000 to be equally matched with the lowest funded commission in the town. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of pushback and we agreed to go up to two at our request would be $2,000. And that we would the next year come back, you know, to increase it to the 3000. Um, the next year we were in a fiscal, not so great. So we didn't, if you go to, I got to move you, Karen, because you're on top of the Sorry, I had to move the panelists to the top of my screen. Um, so we're at 2000 for 2020, 2021, and 2022. I just want to remind us that our goal was to get up to a $3,000 budget so we could have more programming and more um, activities. I think and I'm open to other people's points, but we're still in a COVID situation. I, I don't know that right now we need to go to the to a request. I think the I think you know with um, decreased business revenue for taxes. You know, it's not a great time to be asking for more for our commission. I think I'd like to have a full year of um, maybe trying to do more programming to justify our request, although I think the request well. is justified. Yeah. But I'd like to recommend that we stay at the 2000 for this year, but acknowledge that we are looking to increase our budget once things stabilize with COVID and, um, you know, and eventually town budget's always going to be you know, not having enough money, but, you know, we shouldn't be the ones who take the short shift always. And we're short money compared to what some other departments and commissions get. So I don't think keeping that on the radar is a bad thing to let them know that we're not asking for more this year, but we intend to in the future. We put it off in 2020. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but so my recommendation is that we vote on keeping it the same and depending on my conversation with the finance team, which is the town accountant, the town treasurer, the assessor, maybe Mark Purple, the town administrator. I'm not sure who all else goes in um, to discuss this with us, but, um, and I'm not sure if this, my understanding, see the different line items? That's a guesstimate on what we use. And if we, anything that, because it's not personnel, if we need to say use office supplies um, and we spend it all, the 500 that we can use it for, you know, any, they're interchangeable. They're sort of a, a best estimate of where you're going to fund your things. But a lot of times our funding doesn't come under those issues. So they're the best ones we could find. You have to have a line item. So any comments, Sarah, Karen? No, I, I think your strategy really makes sense. Um, Freddie, I don't think we should be asking for more money right now because things are difficult. But um, but we do, I think, need a bigger um, budget in the future as, as uh, things start opening up more. Yeah, I think we can have a plan for how we would spend it because if they ask us, I don't really have one right now. A lot of what we did, and this is for you, Aphrodite, there are conferences and we would go to them and use... Um, our budget to pay for us. There's the Antrust Conference. There's the Conservation, um, the MACC Conference. I went to a lot of workshops when everything was shut down to learn more about, well, like meadow planting. So I know to share the information, not to keep it just for myself, but that's how, you know, a lot of the information I have that I share at our workshops and our, our volunteer days you know, that's shared with the whole community. So it's not just my benefit. Also, I'm donating a huge amount of my time going to the workshop. So um, that was last year, but we hope like in the past, 
all the commissioners would go to a workshop. Remember, Karen, you, me, and... Um, we went to many of them, yes. Yeah. yeah, we went to the open space workshop and Lisa Braccio and Mimi Luttrell and I, back when it was the three of us, we, we did quite a few of the land trust type ones and planning ones. Lots of information to learn. And then we get to share it with the community and help do our work better. So those are more Zoom meetings now. And... You know, time is an issue for everyone. Not everyone's available when all of these things come up. So I was the main person doing it last year. But that would be available to our new member to get up to speed on some of the concepts that, you know, we, the others may be more familiar with. So, all right. Do we want to keep it at this? Um, is there a motion? I can make a motion that we keep the budget at $2,000 for the uh, fiscal year 2022. With the caveat that we uh, acknowledge that we are will be looking for more in the yes. following year. Yes, with the caveat that future 2023, we anticipate requesting an increase. Second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Karen? Karen Svikovic is in favor. Sarah? Sarah Rossitano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. That passes unanimously. Next. Uh, the next item is um, the library. Mm. Yes, the library. Okay. So okay. everyone here has been involved. We are, we have the flower garden area, I call it flower garden, the pollination preservation garden. It's mostly nectar plants. We need both nectar and pollen. Most of the pollen plants are shrubs. They weren't fitting in the area of the planting for the what is mostly flowers. That area has been almost completed. I, there might be one or two plants we'll want to add. We need to continue building a network of volunteers with garden plans and, not sorry, garden plans, a network of volunteers with garden activities and that we need to talk about that. And then additionally, there's the lawn alternative area that we, was going to be a phase two, but we had plants for it. So we started you planting it. It's almost say it's over it's about 75 percent 80 percent planted we need to put down some burlap to save it um, from getting all weeds over the winter and then finish planting it in the in the spring in the meantime we already approved um, that we were applying for a cpa grant for the phase two which would be you know where the trees are the 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 um, in the corner to clean that out, make it a shade garden using some of the more shady plants and to also add in uh, shrubs on Dr. G. Gear's list, as well as a bench. And we need some edging around the garden area. I saw some really nice granite type ones at the MFA, they have some plantings on their front lawn. I think that would be helpful. There's invasive species to be dealt with. The whole lawn area is full of invasive um, creeping Charlie. It's not a lawn, it's, and those creeping Charlies creep and it will be getting, it, you know, keeps climbing into the gardens. So I think that's another um, plant material we wanna remove as well as there's a lot of storm, stormwater issues. I don't know if it's stormwater or just, it's a high water table and the whole lawn area floods and stays flooded for a long time after a rain event. And with these heavy rain events, you think it looks like lawn and you step in it and it's three inches of water. So one of the things is how can we mitigate that impact of um, basically not being able to use the lawn area because it's a standing puddle for a lot of time. So those are the issues we want to satisfy. We don't have a plan. We would be looking to write the application, get 
buy in from the library and buy in. I have to go to recreation committee because commission, because I believe this is a passive recreation project. CPA will want their you know, approval of it. So does all of that sound in line with what we've been talking about and moving forward with this application? Is that a yes, Karen? Yes. And Sarah? Uh, yep, that's, a, that's definitely a yes. Okay, so I'll move forward with the application. Um, Sarah, as a liaison, yeah. did you have anything you wanted to update us on? Anything that's been going on or communications with the library you want to share? Um, I haven't had much recently, so um, I don't think they're currently interested in doing programming is what it seems like um, because they're pretty booked. Right. What they say. So we're just going to have to, I think, wait till early spring or try to think of things maybe for early spring. But as far as until then, I think, I think that they say that their programming is pretty full. So my takeaway there, a little bit different, is that the library does programming that we would collaborate with them on, and they also need things to be planned well ahead of time. And as a volunteer organization, we don't always get things put together as far in advance as they need. So that's something for us to try to work better on and um, try to find a date for the spring to set and see what we would work with them on. In the meantime, we have this seed exchange, the, the wildflower, sorry, the um, winter sow program. And I would like to work and get permission from Ryan. So it would be an open space preservation commission project. We're going, you know, we are doing this winter so project. Um, we're collecting seeds. We have a great volunteer helping us out already. Uh, it will be more species than we had last year. I'd like to have an event at the pollination preservation garden you know we'd have to bring our own tables is one of the things there's there's no support from the library staff or equipment period so we would have to bring our own tables and um, I think we could benefit by doing it there because we're trying to highlight the library and bring programming at the library even though it wouldn't be a quote library open space commission joint project yes. but what we could do is I think Ryan said he could advertise for us and that we could, you know, use the blog and social media. Mm -hmm. We'd have to figure out how to get people to register, I think, because depending on how many tables we have, how many people could come. And this would be to be doing sorting and cleaning. And then later we don't have the winter sow until January, beginning of January. And I don't know that that's appropriate to do in a group outside. And mm -hmm. depending on what COVID numbers are, maybe we could do that inside at the senior center. So let, uh -huh. we'll, look at, we'll look for that. But are, what do you think about having, bringing tables, I know, um, one of our volunteers, Emily Van Nort, brought a lot of tables to um, an event last year we did at the uh, Ecology Research Garden. I mean, it'd be a lot easier for us to go somewhere else. We all know that. But we're trying to highlight this garden and get people there to see and to hear about what we're doing. So it would be a you know, here's the garden, here's what we're doing. And here, let's clean some seeds. And here we can collect even some seeds from the plants at the garden. A few of them have seeds that we could use, which would be a seed collection, um, sort of a de more of a demo than really providing the seeds we need. But, you know, why not use some? How does that sound? Should I try to put that together? That sounds good to me, Freddie. Yeah. So we can arrange a date by email, but if we're in agreement with that, I'll reach out to Ryan when I'm reaching out about 
the CPA grant. Um, the other thing I, I did want to say, there was some in one of the emails from your liaison at the library. Mm -hmm. Sarah, did you want to go over that? Or I'll just mention what I, because I read the email. I think we all did, right? You forwarded it to all of us. Yeah. There were some complaints and we never want complaints um, to rectify. I think some of them were, my opinion is were they were out of line. I don't want to go any deeper than that. But certainly the staging area for all the work we did was not an inappropriate use of the library grounds. We have no storage area. We put stuff neatly in the corner, out of the way. And we were there two, three, four times a week working. So I thought that was an unfortunate choice of wording. And I hope um, my expectation is if the library, the, the message was the library's staff and trustees are getting complaints about the garden. I am there all the time and I talk to people all the time. I have not heard one complaint. I have heard questions, but not complaints. I mean, so, you can't have a work zone, an active work zone without something, you know, temp a temporary, temporary housing zone of supplies and tools. It's just not really feasible, possible. So it's, I, I think, 90, I don't know. I think the majority of people would understand that. So I don't understand where it comes from, but. Right. So I'm just bringing it up so we should all be aware. And if we go into it next year, that we're, we make that very clear going into when we start working again and have an agreement, I guess. Um, the other complaint was about the pink flags. And, you know, part of this is I'm, I'm working in 36 communities where these gardens are going in. This is the standard. It didn't even occur to me somebody might not get it. It's not your standard type of garden installation. It's not the planting technique, the um, establishment period. Those flags have to stay at each individual plant because what happens in the spring is native plants emerge later than weeds and people who are going to be our volunteers and even people who have been working on it. Is that a weed or is it a plant? This helps you not pull out expensive plants that we have put in by mistake because you're weeding. Yep. And it also helps us, you know, and it was interesting because we did a workshop last night, the Native Pollinator Task Force of the Metro West Conservation Alliance. Garden after garden was showcased all with the flags. So, you know, I think it's just getting used to it. I will say that not one person has complained about them to me again. So I'm not sure where that comes from. And then I was at the library the other day. I was just uh, barely, I was there to look at the um, take measurements. And as I was leaving, I, I was driving by and I saw some woman over there walking, looking at it. And I went up to her and had a conversation and then she stayed with her her friend was, she was meeting a friend there and they were fascinated and interested by it and not complain. You know, I was, I thought she might be wondering what was going on. And again, positive, um, very positive comments. So I do know there was another comment that we haven't been uh, um, providing information. So we, we did go put a sign up for Heritage Day, it's not the perfect sign, but to get it up in two days was pretty mm -hmm. amazing. Emily Van Nort did the um, design. It's not exactly necessarily what we would end up with, but it says Pollination Preservation Garden. And then underneath it, it says funded by the Open Space Preservation Commission and the library's LSTA grant, because we have used our funds to supplement um, the wonderful resource we got from the library. So I think the takeaway from this is we do want to have programming there. We do need to do more um, writing, but I was thinking about it. We, we had put several posts out on um, my Southboro. We had the library send out a uh, email. 
It's on their Facebook. It's on their website. I've been communicating regularly on our volunteer days with over 40 people who responded to one email. I know we can do more. We plan to have programming, but we were so busy over the so busy over the summer working to get the garden in. It didn't lead a lot of breath for writing up, you know, more more descriptive um, information. So it's an area we need to improve on over the winter, I would say. What is it, you know, I think one of the ideas is to have signage with QR codes. Yeah. So we can do that. I think having the winter sow um, seed cleaning at the library can help get information out when we post the um, post having it. We can write about the project a little bit. I don't know. Do you have other ideas? I love the QR code idea. Yeah, the QR code, I think, is a great idea. Um, but it requires us writing stuff up, right? Hmm. Yep. And also, I'd like to have a QR code of every plant in there. So I, I have to, um, and this is a, you know, I always feel, you know, got to do more, got to do more. It was an incredibly huge project to undertake. Thank goodness for the volunteers we have. The plan, the original plan got, you know, it, it got done on the fly. It had to be done different because of the flooding we encountered, which no one could have known about. And mm -hmm. a lot of that is because of the still changed um, grading of where we were planting. Where we were upland is now getting flooded in a heavy rainstorm. So we had to change dry plants to wet plants. Um, it required an you know, as we were going, shifting where plants were going. So I need to redesign to match what actually got planted from what we had planned to plant because thankfully I'd gone to those workshops and knew how these plants would act. And I've been working on these types of gardens that allowed me to have the knowledge to say, okay, we need to, we need to trade these two places. And um, I think everyone worked really well with a little bit of chaos for that. But, yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. I mean, it was a learning process for everybody, but the outcome. Yeah. And it's a new type of garden. People aren't used to how it looks. Um, what was another comment I got that somebody was complaining about? Not to us, but I hear um, they're used to seeing flowers that come in all planted and all in big flowers from the garden, the Southboro gardeners. Well, it's a different type of garden. Our goals are environmental saving ecol ecological, you know, functional diversity, biodiversity, species from going to extinction. And it does take a little bit of a learning curve. And I hopefully once it comes into bloom next year, you know, a lot of the concerns will have been um, removed or satisfied. And you can't please everybody. I guess that's another thing to learn. Our goal is to introduce, and we have so many people who are very, very pleased with what we're doing that I, I think it would be a small minority that are complaining. And I would also, I think, Sarah, you asked that if they get any complaints that they send them to me so we can talk. I think so. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, we also, I think you asked that the library staff and the trustees, if they're hearing negative things that they it's you know they support us mm -hmm. you know somebody comes up with a complaint it's like well this is what they're doing and we need to give them a place to go to get information I guess um, a landing on our our Facebook page might be good mm -hmm. another question I have that might make it easier to communicate with our volunteers it's, I think it's $100 for the year if we can get like a constant contact email list. I don't know if because we're a commission, if we can do that or not. Mm. But if you guys are amendable, I will find out from the, I guess, Mark Purple, if, if we're allowed or... or Commissions that are using so the only concern I would have with constant contact is you know I've I've been a part of other organizations that have used it and I think we need to really control how often we ping the the um, the group 
because sometimes it gets to be too much and then people um, unregister. Well, that has nothing to do with with um, the allowability of us to use it. No, it and that would be totally on us. Well, first of all, it would be we're having an event. We just, um, you know, how you register for an event. I did for the winter so last year, I found it difficult. We did the event bright. And then emailing the people afterwards became a challenge. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So through constant contact, and I'm not committed to constant contact, any of the other ones. I'm just, we're just using it at the Native Pollinator Task Force now. And it was made our work so much easier. Everyone registered through there. We then got their contact info for follow up emails to send them recordings and information. But I, you know, I'm thinking this is not a pinging them. You know, how often do we have an event? Right, right. So my understanding of constant comment contact is it, it's used by businesses that are constantly keeping a large list of participants up to date. And I don't think that's necessarily what we're trying to do, but I do think we need some kind of technology that helps us to reach out to an email list when we have an event. Well, it's not just when we have an event. So like with the, with the library, we have a list of volunteers. I need to communicate with them. Yeah, yeah. Then if we do have an event, I have to set up an event page somewhere yeah. to have them register. Right now, it's just been drop in. Registering always is better than just drop in. Sure, absolutely. But they have to email. So each individual one has to email me and tell me they're coming. Yeah. And, you know, for the library um, volunteers, it became, you know, not insignificant amount of my time. We don't have staff. So I'm looking at something, you know, the fact that um, companies with lots of people and they use it all the time, that's their business plan. We would have a totally different plan. Yeah. I'm is just trying just to find something though? to make it easier. What? Is it, is it just email? Constant contact? Yeah. I believe so. We would, how would we that could... help the sign up? Yeah, so I guess that's what I'm saying. Freddie, is we should research what tools are available. I, my personal opinion based on what I know is that constant contact is not going to fix our issues, but there's probably other things out there that will. Well, we can look for another one. What I will say that just happened to us, we had 80 people register for an event. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, all I had to do was write up the information and it went out to our email list and they registered from there. We didn't have to do the registration. Through and then I get contact? through constant contact. Then they got a confirmation email with a link to the Zoom meeting. And we got a list of everyone who attended and any other information that was, I wanted to know what town they were from, right? So I didn't have to send out multiple emails. It was one and done. And then you determine how often you ping people. Yeah. And then now we're going to do a follow up email because everyone wants the recording because about half the people signed up for it couldn't make it. They knew they couldn't make it, but they wanted to be on our email list to get the follow up resources. So what's going to happen is we're going to write one email and we can send it out just out of our 350 member contact list on constant contact. The 80 people that registered will get the follow-up email because they want it. So I don't have to go in and create a new email list and cut and paste or whatever it is to, like, if we get a new email list, you have to make a new group. I think it's, I'm just saying, I think it's easier. I'm right. not committed to just constant contact. I'm just saying this, I know there's other, I know there's other programs that do it, but having a program where we enter their emails once and then write up an invitation to an event and they're registered through that I'm group. I'm looking now and it, it does have, um, I was looking to see what the features and it's, they have dynamic sign up forms. I mean, it's, it's way more than we need, but if it has enough of what we need for, and the price is right, I don't know. It gets more expensive the more features you use. 
I'm not sure why there was a free version, but you only get so many emails and it doesn't mean emails. Each person you count, you email counts as a one. So you, you go over that really quickly. It says it's $45 a month. Yeah, no, we're paying 20. So there's got to be a lesser version. For up to 500 contacts. Yeah, we. It's 20 a month. But that does not include the um, surveys, polls, and event registration. Geez, I don't know how we did it because we paid 20 and we got the, cert the event registration taken care of. Mm -hmm. We can look into it. I mean, I just want us to be on the same page yep. at this. First, we need to find out if we can even do this because there might be something through the town's official. Um, you know, we have to abide by open meeting law and how are other groups managing it? I'm mm -hmm. not sure. We vote on something. We're having a program. We're sending out information we agree on that's discussed in a um, discussed in a public meeting. Then we send it out. I don't think that's any different than what we're doing already with our programming. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying the winter so last year was huge, huge, huge. It time so huge. Yeah. and then we didn't I didn't follow up with the people it was too hard to do the emails to the whole group um, so I just want to look at it into it first to find out what's legally okay and then if we can do it also um, putting more we want to be more proactive not everyone is you know getting information on well, I'll say this, the Trails Committee has a Facebook group. Now, I was told that committees couldn't have or commissions couldn't have Facebook, but they're using it. So I'd like to find out how, if that could benefit us, because a lot of our garden stuff is um, picture specific and or how to use the website more effectively. Not everyone's on Facebook. So in this day of social media, you have to be everywhere. Email websites, Facebook. I'm not going into Twitter and all of that, but need to be, so we need to be creating documents to put on our website, but creating documents takes time. So I guess to move on from this, do you think I should investigate what kind of email program we're allowed to use? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that will be a meeting for the for the next one. Should we pick a date for a? We'll do it by email. Picking a date to have a winter so to see if we can do it at the library, and if not, I think the easiest place may be check the uh, senior center. It, um, it's actually called Corderville Hall. If we can do anything there, and then the third place would be Breakneck Hill. Ecology Research Garden for a cleaning and sorting of the seeds. Does that sound good? Yep. Yeah, that, okay. sounds, good. that sounds good. What's the next agenda item? You still here with us, Rose? I'm sorry, I said Rose. I meant Aphrodite. Yes, I am here. Okay. I'm just trying to do things and listen to you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, so, um, so the next uh, item, well, it says the Native Plant and Pollinator Initiative status update, golf course, Halloran Open Space. Yeah, so the golf course and the Halloran Open Space, both are an Open Space Preservation Commission project with CPA funding to remove invasives and then do plantings. The golf course, it's a um, Japanese knotweed. It's a multiple year removal process and uh, we've got it done we now have to we have the dead tree of heaven which are the host plants for the spotted lantern fly, fly the invasive and unfortunately they found a population in massachusetts it's here now um, it's in fitchburg so we you know good thing we started work on that those trees can come down and then the japanese knotweed still needs a few more years of work i think so we're not ready to plant there yet. 
and the Halloran. I don't see anyone else here. No, no attendees. No, no attendees. Um, Sam is working with the state to get access through the Mass Pike. Um, that was based on um, a concept that the Open Space Preservation Commission had when we were looking at the property through GIS and noticing that there was, if we could walk on the Mass Pike land, we could get into the property and getting permission from the Department of Transportation takes some time. It looks like it might be going forward. Once that happens, because we can't get the treatment for the invasive species guys to get in there until we have access. And that's the best um, access. The other legal access is through um, a trail, a narrow trail up a hill into another property and walking over. And the trail is like in someone, it looks like it's in someone's front yard. It's not really the way we wanna access that land. Um, Breakneck Hill, I don't know, we're still working on the Becology Research Guard and that's an initiative ours with Dr. G. Gear. We had a big, busy work day last weekend and got a lot of work done. We need some more work. Plus a wildflower meadow is going in. Um, and then the Pollination Preservation Garden at Beals Preserve. It's a partnership we have with the South Broken Land Foundation. That there, we did the cardboard and the you know, we're doing the soil prep, it will be ready. We're actually going to put some of the plants from last year's winter so in right now as a holding spell. I think um, Aphrodite, some of the plants you brought that were excess from yours last, at what you brought down to um, Breakneck Hill, a few yes. of those will be going in there. So yeah. we're, I'm taking what I need for Breakneck Hill's Becology Garden and plant, we'll be planting those there. And then the remainder will be going into this other location that someday you and I and this commission should take a walk and take a look at how it's going. But we had two volunteers, Catherine um, Krostoff is our project manager with SALF. She's, you know, our volunteer working with the, the project and she and Gary, who's another volunteer, he's from Northboro though, um, were over there weeding um, on Tuesday to get ready for putting those plants in. So that's a huge success going forward. So that's it from that. Um, master plan update. Do you have anything to give us, Karen? I, I think we said uh, we need to have a whole meeting for it. Yeah, so we are in the process of finalizing. Um, I do have the current draft of the chapter, which um, I can send to you, Sarah. I sent it to Freddie. I guess I can't send it to you guys, I guess, together. Is that right, Freddie, in terms of open meeting law? No, that's so let's be clear. Open meeting law. We're working on the master plan together. Yeah. We've seen the drafts. We discuss it in meetings. So yes, for review, we can all get it. It's like sending a plan. Great. So I'll, I'll send it out. Um, there's been a few minor tweaks to it. Um, I've been in close collaboration with Kat from uh, Trails and with Kristen from Rec. Um, it's a little confusing when you look at the chapter um, because, I mean, I found it confusing because um, of the way they require it be set up. So I'll just alert you um, a little bit to that. Uh, so let me tell you specifically what I mean by that. Just opening it up here. Okay. So there's a requirement that there be um, a section for open space. So that, you know, neatly fits into what we're doing as well as a session, a section for um, natural resources. And it has to be called that. So our um, our work that we do in our commission really spans both of those areas, both open space and natural resources, because natural resources is where things like the native plant um, pollinator initiative is and the Becology Research Garden, whereas open space is where things like the protection of open space and the management of open space would be. So things like 
um, you know, acquisition of the Halloran property um, or the work that was done on the um, golf course. So you'll look, when you look at the chapter, you'll see three sections. One section is open space, one section is natural resources, and one section is rec. And we've um, agreed as a committee on a kind of format where we start with just kind of a general overview, and then we talk about our accomplishments since 2008, um, which is when the last plan was. And then um, we talk about what are the active um, committees or commissions that relate to that area, and then what are the specific goals. So that's essentially how it's set up. And you've seen that in the previous versions that I say. So one of the things that I think is important for us, you know, and, and we've talked about this before, is the more that we can get what we think is really important in this master plan document, that will also really help us in terms of prioritizing things that we um, think are really priorities for groups of people like the selectmen. So you mentioned you've been working closely with recreation and trails. Can you explain how that coincides with the Open Space Preservation Commission's efforts? It doesn't, well, I mean, it, they help us and we help them. We've seen that in other things, but this chapter, when you read it through, is not our chapter, like our chapter as a commission, like each commission or committee doesn't have their own chapter. There's very, there's a, a, a finite number of chapters. So different commissions or committees that relate to the work of the topic area of the chapter are collaborating together to write the chapter. So that's actually, I think, an important differentiation. Like when you read through the chapter, it's not just about us. It's about, it's about what the Conservation Commission is doing. It's about what SALT is doing. It's about what TRAILS is doing. Like all that kind of comes together in this chapter that is entitled Open Space, Natural Resources and Recreation. So, and we always love to collaborate. And like I said, with the um, CPA application at the library, we're you know looking for support from recreation as a passive recreation project. So that's great. Um, are there any, in your working together, are you finding any collaborations that are coming to the surface or is that just that you're working together on writing it that makes sure all three aspects? Yeah, we're working together on writing it. Um, we're working together on writing it. And I, I think it, we, we, we can also see, like when you look at the accomplishments, like you remember, Freddie, the really great conversation that we had in the Becology Garden where I took notes and you talked to me about what you saw as the major accomplishment since 2008. So I took those notes and converted it into the chapter and then others have been doing similar kinds of things. So that's great. Um, and I'm curious, you mentioned the South Rope and Land Foundation, have they had a chance to review this and offer any input where they offered that? I don't know if we ever discussed that or not. Yeah. Um, you know, Judith and Mimi are mostly um, organizing that, but there has definitely been discussion around the fact that once we get the chapters into clean format, that we would, um, you know, share them with groups like SOLF. But what we don't want them to do is start from scratch writing a chapter. But we do want to make sure that, like, the description that we have of SOLF, which was taken off of their um, town portion of the website, um, is update, updated and accurate and correct. Um, and that the goals, um, you know, are comprehensive in what they feel like is important in those areas. So I guess my question is, I think you're coming to the tail end of this. Right. Then once it's done, does it go out? Like, so I guess my question is, if you wait to the end, what input can they give? Would it be better to have them ask them for any input now? Well, the way that's that something the, the commission should have done. Yeah, no, it's a fair question. The way the committee was set up is that they should have been having input throughout because originally there was a member on the master plan committee. From the so South Open, let me, I'm sorry to interrupt. From the South Open Land Foundation had a member. I believe they did. But most of the, you know, important boards and committees. They're not a town board. They're, no, they're so I guess they didn't, then they didn't have a member. Yeah. 
So I'm just wondering, this is not about the committee. Did right, the Open right. Space Commission miss an opportunity to bring SALF on? Should we have asked their review to possibly, advise possibly. us? It's a good point. You know, I mean, we you, can don't, you can't think of everything, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could certainly ask their input, um, but but my um, understanding is that Mimi and Judith has been, have been asking for input throughout this whole process from all the major boards and committees. And again, they're not a board or committee. Right. So I'm not saying it was Judith and Mimi's obligation. Did this Open Space Commission in our review miss an opportunity? Mm, to say to them, is it important? Perhaps. No, to say to them, you know, do you want to take a look at this and see what you think? It's yeah. a little late in the process, but I don't want to give it to them as a done deal. And they say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, because they no, have not, some experience. It's not really in the process. So right now the goal is to get clean copies of all of the chapters and then to think through who are the stakeholders that we need to pass this by before we finalize it. Okay. You guys have had the luxury of being updated on the various versions of the chapter. Well, that's but, not a luxury. That but, was it. Well, I say luxury because most most committees and commissions haven't done that. They haven't looked at it. Various that's, iterations of it. I just want to be clear. That's their failure. Not mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's them not doing what they should be doing, mm -hmm. or their rep not bringing it back. Mm -hmm. You have done an amazing job, Karen, making sure that your commission supported everything. Well, it wasn't I mean, just I think you. The way it should be right. If I'm a representative of this. Right. Mission on this committee. So, yeah, that that's the way all of the representatives should be doing it. And if it didn't happen that way, it's not because we were provided a, I'm just pushing in the word luxury. We did our hard work. You did the big heavy lift and we did our job you know, getting back to you and giving you input to bring back. Yeah. If, if other committees and boards haven't done that, that's just way too bad. Well, I see a hand up. Aphrodite. Yes, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I gotta go. Uh, I okay, have like a, I have an appointment. Yeah. So I apologize that I cannot stay at the, at the end. Um, Freddie, we can talk and we can go ahead and do the application, okay? Wonderful. Oh, that sounds happy that you okay. didn't run screaming. This was a little bit of a different meeting and we're actually almost done. So you stayed for the, almost the whole thing. So yeah, thank you, okay. Aphrodite. Thank, 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 you, thank so. you so much. Thank you, Aphrodite. I'm so happy yeah, to have you. Thank you, you, Aphrodite. Yeah, yeah, we're actually running a little over that we thought we would be meeting. So I think um, the next step is we will try to schedule a meeting to go over the whole thing, Karen. Yeah, that would be great. Time so to I'll, it. I'll send out the most recent version. I'll also bring up to Judith and Mimi whether or not we should run it by at this stage, um, solve in a more formal way. Yeah, and it may be us bringing it to solve and us getting input to give to you to bring back. I don't know that it's the whole yeah. committee should be doing that. Yeah. I think it was maybe, maybe the Open Space Commission um, might have missed an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right. I know we went a little late. This was a really great meeting, though, for, I mean, the Kens and Kevin Kens and the Northboro Road come. I hope our, um, our motion made sense because it, it was very, it wasn't what they wanted, but we don't, our recommendations for Kens doesn't abide by um, what the applicant wants but I think we were looked at as being cooperative and um, trying to create a, a partnership in the future. So what am I saying? I don't know. The meeting went a little longer, but we did have okay. extra. <laughs> what? Okay. Nothing? Okay. I, I, I really gotta go. I'm, I'm yeah. so ready. We got you left. So, I'm Just so go. sorry. Just Thank say you. goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, -bye. I thought she'd already left. I thought so too, but she was still yeah. taking on. She yeah, she did. So, was there anything else that we needed to do today? Um, was there anything else um, on the agenda? The agenda. Downtown zoning bylaw. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I guess they're moving forward with it. They're going to town meeting. 
they made some compromises. I know there's a lot of people not happy with it. Our concerns never got addressed. And, you know, we, we submitted them a year ago and just nobody ever cared. And I thought we would go through it and look at it again. Um, maybe I'll send that out for our next meeting. And if it hasn't gone to town meeting, we can take a position or not. But I don't know if, yeah, that will be the thing to do. If we can have a meeting before town meeting, we'll go over it. And if not, I think we just don't have to say anything and take our own personal votes. I think our concern was the lack of sidewalks was one of them. The lack, the total lack of any consideration of climate change in the zoning. There's other towns are and cities are getting funding to change the type of zoning that we're creating. It doesn't make sense to me. We're creating zoning that when towns already have it, they're now going and getting funding to change it so they can be more climate change resilient. Yeah, and, it is here we, yeah. and here we are creating something that I never heard them talk about it. This yeah. is the Economic Development Committee or the, or the Sport of Selectmen. We didn't weigh in. Um, maybe we should have during the planning board, but you know, it kept being that the, every time we looked at it, it would be changed. And how many, it's not our main goal. How many times can we look at it? Um, I still don't know whether, what my personal feeling is. If it, I know that people feel it needs to be addressed downtown, a lot of changes, but you know, how do you not, how do you support something that doesn't address the major thing that's going to hit us in the next 10 years? And that this type of building may be detrimental to the town overall. I, I'm not sure how. And this all goes to what we already discussed. So we can't take a vote on anything. Maybe I'll send out the final version. And if we have a meeting, we can decide, you know. And then it's a political hot box, right? That, do we want to step in that quicksand? Um, is it big enough not, are our concerns big enough not to support something when we didn't weigh in during all of the hearings. And I regret that, but it's, you know, I don't know. We, we did give our opinion a year ago and got a basically go pound sand response from the, um, that's how I'm taking it. That was the response I got, we got, not I, we. We're not doing this, we're not doing this. I don't know, ask someone else. Um, Basically, we were asked to give input, and that's what we got, and the, no one else ever got back to us. So there's a missed opportunity. We're an all-volunteer group doing the best we can. We don't have staff to follow up on a lot of this. So I guess we'll just um, see if we meet before town meeting, which is in two weeks. I don't know. And if not, we'll just let it linger out there and vote our own votes okay okay do you have, well do you have any input on that karen or, or sarah did you want to push to make a recommendation i, I think it's hard pressed when we didn't we didn't weigh in yeah I, I don't e i don't even know how we would go about that at this point in time um i i agree with what you're saying about climate change and the zoning bylaws um, needing to be in line with what's happening related to climate change, things like planting more trees, for example. But um, so, you know, that's another initiative maybe that we can work on. Maybe downtown's not the end all, but um, we have a lot of trees coming down. Sarah, you mentioned you saw some coming down today. Yeah, I want to take that street um, before you get to the library. I took took a right on that narrow street that goes by the church in the townhouse. Common street? Yes. So oh, as we know from the library. Yep. So, so I'm coming from um, the north side of town, taking a right heading south on it. And with St. Mark's on my left. So I took a right and it was right at that triangle, you know, where the intersection where that street floods? It's St. Mark's Road. If, so if you go, if you're coming from Marlboro mm -hmm. towards south on 85 and you take a, a right, 
it's a right heading towards the townhouse. Right. And Pilgrim so, Church on your left is the little parking area for St. Yeah, Paul. so yes. right, so all around that parking area from the, from the, um, near the stop sign, because when I came back and I was taking a left back onto 85, it was actually, he was starting to cut a tree and I was worried. I was like, oh, I better take a left soon because what if it fell the wrong way? Um, right, so right on the corner, all the way to the other side of that parking lot, there they were taking all these trees down. A lot of them looked not well. Um, I did see two trees right on 85 that were barricaded around. There was like a fence around it to save it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was driving, so I didn't see what kind or anything, but they're cleaning that area up. Hopefully it's just, you know, diseased and dangerous trees. Um, I don't know how far I haven't, that was this morning, but I was surprised to see all that work all of a sudden. Okay, well, I know that's a planned project of the town. So I'm wondering if they're moving ahead or if it, it was a private tree company. It was not the town um, DPW, but it is, isn't it St. Mark's that owns that corner for now? So. do. There was a big plan that DPW got a grant for called Shared Spaces, I think. We looked at this before. Yeah. And it is trading the road over there to St. Mark's, closing that road where the way it goes into Route 85, right? So the whole section of road that floods next to their parking area going up the hill would mm -hmm. then be gifted to St or traded or what to St. Mark's, we'd give them the road and they'd give us some land over by the cemetery in the back of the library so that a street would be put in running more um, parallel to the front of the library. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that whole triangle, so that St. Mark's owns the land beyond the cemetery in the back of the library. So we'd get a section of that, put the relocate the road on what's now owned by St. Mark's, and they'd get that section of road to increase their parking for the uh, fields. Mm -hmm. And then by having that road there, we'd eliminate some of the stormwater issues. And then there was also funding for a park. Yep in that area. And I think the park would also be dealing with stormwater. So I should follow up with Karen on if that's, if what they're doing has anything to do with that grant. Yeah. That's, what I, was, project that's what I was thinking forward. when I saw it. Yeah. And if there's grant money, then it could be done for the town without DPW doing the work, you know, they might've hired a company. Yeah. Or it could be St. Mark's. So we don't know. But the question is, even if a dead tree comes down, are they planting something where they get yeah, somewhere else? And should we have a bylaw? Do we have a bylaw? I know that the planning board was working on one and somehow it got hung up somewhere. And there may be a need for a citizen's petition to address it. I'll send out some information on on trees, but other towns are, you know, it's a big deal. They're calling it the urban forest and it's street trees create your or urban forest as well. Not just like the town forest, you need to be looking at. And the other problem is with more storms, you don't want trees. Like I have the electric company wants to take down a couple of trees on my property. And it's like, yeah, they're dead or dying. And they would take out the electric system to not just my house, but the whole street if they come down. But what obligation do we have to replant? And I don't know that there is any. Something to maybe put on our future agenda. What do you think? Yeah. I think that makes I make that make sense. Is that in the is that in the master plan? I would hope. Around replanting trees yeah. when they're taken down. Yeah. Nothing nothing like that, no. Well, nothing maybe that's that, something we look at. Nothing that's that specific. I know that, I, am I correct in that you have goals, not specific actions, Karen? Um, well, no, we, we um, have goals and specific actions. Well, 
maybe before it's a done deal. So, not, so for each broad goal, for each broad goal, there are specific recommendations. And the idea is for the recommendations to be as measurable as possible. Um, I'm eating now while we're talking because yeah, we need to go but before my next meeting. I just, I just think that that should be something we look at and maybe there's other, any other things. And I know it's late in the game to be adding no, stuff. This is, this is a good time to be thinking about that. Um, we can't, you know, start from scratch or completely change things, but we can certainly add things or modify wording or that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a great thing. Make sure the notes reflect uh, the notes, the minutes reflect that Sarah. For under the master plan, we sort of went back up. Mm -hmm. What did we go? I'm sorry. Did I jump? You know, did so, I jump an agenda item? What was master plan then downtown zoning? So, oh, downtown zoning got us to the trees. Trees got us back to the master plan. Yep. Um, I think we want to want to look at that closely. I would be surprised that it's not in there somewhere because I believe the planning board, you know, made us a tree city and um, or tree town. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but I think it's something we want to look at. I'd also like our stewardship committee to take a look at it as well to get any input from them, which, you know, we're, we're for breakneck hill in the town forest, but we do have opinions on, you know, managing those areas, which are townwide relevant, I think. So, yeah, the trees are a big deal. So, you know, one, our best hope at getting saved is, you know, carbon sequestration and stormwater issues. So, all right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. It is 11, 122. And are you in favor, Karen? I, I'm in favor, yeah. Sarah? Sarah Rossitano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah.